Hi, welcome to Woodworking with Wes. We have had some requests on our channel about how to lay out and do a corner cabinet. We do corner cabinets in a lot of our kitchen work, Lazy Susan corners, corner vanities, and corner sinks. However, a typical corner cabinet is typical in all respects. There are some things you need to take into account and I'm going to show you how I lay out a typical corner. It can be any size. And then we're going to build a Lazy Susan upper that I have to do for the job that we're currently on. First off, let's get started with some basics. One of the basics you need to know is, is your corner a freestanding corner and how big are the sides that you need to have? Or are you in a situation where you have cabinets to both sides and how deep are those cabinets? That will determine the points of your corner, or the beginning points of your corner. One of the other things you need to know is what kind of access do you have to have for your corner and how much space that corner is going to take up. These are all things you need to work out as you plan a corner cabinet of any kind, whether it's kitchen cabinet corner, bookshelf corner, storage cabinet corner, anything like that, all the corner basics are the same. Let's get started. Now I like to draw out a corner full size and so that's what we're going to do. This is going to be a Lazy Susan upper a kitchen cabinet corner that we are presently on and we're going to draw out and and show you exactly how I do a layout. By doing a layout that gives you the dimensions of all of the pieces that you need to cut in order to make your corner cabinet come out. There are some standard things that I do and I'll show you those, but let's get started by doing the basic layout. To get started on our corner cabinet layout, this is for an upper. Our upper cabinets are 12 inches deep and this line indicates 12 inches, as does this line indicate 12 inches. These are the cabinets that will be going out from both sides of our corner cabinet. Our Lazy Susan is going to be 24 inches by 24 inch cabinet. So let's start out here. I use a framing square. I always, like I say, like to draw this out full size because it gives me the size of all of the pieces I have to cut. We'll start out by indicating our 24 by 24. It's always nice to start with a nice square piece of material that I can put my framing square up against. That's one of the reasons I like to draw on a piece of wood like this. Okay, there's our Lazy Susan corner, 24, 24 inches from the corner out. So we know that our face angle is going to be between these two points. Let's line those up. There is the start of our Lazy Susan corner. Now, let's start filling in some of the cut sizes that we need to do. One of the things that we know are the sides of our cabinet are going to be 3 quarters of an inch thick. So let's mark a 3 quarter inch there. Put our framing square up against our board. And there's our side. Let's do the same thing over here. Let me walk around here and get a tape measure. Sorry for being in your way, but this is 24, so 23 and 1 quarter would indicate our 3 quarter inch side. There are the sides of our cabinet. We're going to have a solid face, a three quarter inch thick uh, hardwood face on this cabinet. So let's indicate that. That's going to be parallel to our front. So we're going to give a couple of marks here on our three quarter inch measurement. Again, using our framing square for a straight edge. A 
line up to two marks we just made. And there's the face of our cabinet. Now, one of the things we have to know when you do anything like this, your face has to go all the way to the corner and to dead end into your other cabinet. Face frame is what I'm talking about. The face frame will have a look. Let's just give a little indication of what the face frame is going to look like. The face frame is going to look like this. And then your cabinet comes out like this and this. And that's this drawing right here. So our solid face frame is through this line right here. And this is our end panel starting at this point going back. Now, I always make a face frame, and so our face frame will have uh, styles and rails. The styles, I have determined over the course of years that the styles need to be 2 and 3 sixteenths from this point over. So let's taper. And the reason that, that is, is when we get a door on here, the door needs to open. This door needs to open. If this was a base cabinet, there would be drawers that have to open. And they have to pass one another. And I have found that by having a frameless cabinet on either side, I need to have a two and three quarter inch, or two and three sixteenths, excuse me, two and three sixteenths corner, uh, or I mean uh, style on this cabinet in order to allow my doors and drawer faces to pass without bumping into one another. And that's just a kind of a, a measurement that I have learned over with experience over the years. Um, so it's a trial and error uh, measurement that I have come up with. And so as I would be listing my face frame, I would put two, two and three sixteenths by the height of the cabinet. There's my two and three sixteenths. Now, my measurement for my rails, top and bottom, will be 14, and I burn an inch right there, put it on my mark, and I'm 14 and 1 8. So I've got to have a top rail and a bottom rail that are 14 and 1 8 by whatever the thickness of my rail needs to be. There is the beginnings of my layout for my corner cabinet. One of the other things I need to indicate is my cabinet will have a quarter inch back. So there'll be a quarter of an inch indicated here for a back. Now, you wouldn't think I would need to indicate a back, but I'm going to show you in a minute. You've got to allow for your back in order to take one more additional measurement that's very critical in building your cabinet. So let's put a little line across there. There's our quarter inch back. Remember this cabinet is 24 by 24. We have a three quarter inch side and a quarter inch back. So the top and bottom of our cabinet or the floor of a sink cabinet or vanity cabinet uh, needs to be 23 inches. So let's check our measurement. We'll burn an inch. And there we are, 24 inches. So our bottom and top is 23 by 23. The next thing we need to know is how much do we cut off for the front. Again, our quarter inch back comes into play because our back is going to go I didn't complete my line here, but let me complete my line real quick so that I can show you that. Our quarter inch back is going to go clear across the back of our side panels. Width of the side is going to be from this point right here to this point right here where it connects into our face frame. We'll lay a measurement on there, again burning an inch, and we are 11 and 3 eighths. So 11 and 3 eighths, and an 11 and 3 eighths 
is the side of our the size of our sides. So if I were to go to my uh, table saw to cut out my cabinets, I would cut two 23 by 23, and I would cut two 11 and 3 eighths by the height of the cabinet that I need to have. Then I would take my 23 by 23, and I would measure up 11 and 3 eighths on each side, mark a line, and cut off that corner so that my face frame is ready to go. Let's go ahead and go to the table saw, cut out our parts, make our face frame, and show you how this goes together. We're here at the table saw, and according to our layout drawing, these are the floors, the top and bottom shelf. They have to be 23 by 23, and the height of our cabinet is 28 and a quarter, so I've already cut the sides 28 and a quarter, but they need to be 11 and 3 eighths total distance. Now, the total distance is from the long point of our bevel. I've already put the bevel on, the 45 degree angle, and all we'll do is cut those 11 and 3 eighths of an inch. So let's just go ahead, turn on the table saw, get our pieces cut, and then head back to our bench. The last cut that we need to make is our angle cut. Our sides are 11 and 3 eighths, so we'll measure out here 11 and 3 eighths and put a mark there. On this other side, 11 and 3 eighths and make our mark. And then we'll take a straight edge and lay across our points there. See if I can hold it down good while I make my mark. All right. That will be the face of our cabinet right there. So let's go ahead and cut off the face of our cabinet. Now, in years past, and if I were to do this a lot, there are jigs that you can make for your table saw that hold your piece of of material at a perfect 45. I don't have one of those left over anymore because I don't build, build many corner cabinets anymore. But we're just going to cut this off and then we're going to sand to the line to make our line perfect. So we're just going to do a freehand cut. You can see our freehand cut is short of the line, but we have an edge sander and we can take our edge sander and sand to the line so that it'll be perfect. We'll do that on both pieces and head back to the bench. With our uh, panels all cut to side, our sides and our sides and our top and bottom, our next step is to put our face frame together. We have our sizes cut on our face frame. We're going to take those over to our Craig boring machine and drill our holes and assemble it uh, here on the table and be ready to go with our face frame. With our parts cut and our face frame made, time to assemble.
now have the main box of our uh, Lazy Susan put together. Here is our face frame that we'll be nailing on. That's the next part. Now I have made my face frame a little long. There'll be a light rail. This is the bottom of the cabinet. This is a light rail extension on our face frame. And so when we nail this on, this looks like it hangs down, but that's the reason it's supposed to is for the light rail. When the cabinets come in from the side here and here, they will also have a light rail on, which allows for an under cabinet lighting feature that will be installed on the job. Let's go ahead and nail on the face frame. We just glue and face nail because this is a painted uh, cabinet. We'll just glue and face nail and putty and sand. All right, here's our Lazy Susan put together, face on it, puttied, ready to sand. Let's come back after we get it sanded and we'll walk through and talk about some of the things that we did that make this a nice cabinet. There's our cabinet all put together, sanded, ready for the paint shop. I want you to look inside. We have nailed a back on one side of our uh, cabinet before we send it to the paint shop, mostly for stability and to hold it good and square. In our construction, we nailed a 3x3 three three bracing corner in the back. And I want to show you one other thing. When we install this cabinet in the house, there's going to be a row of cabinets on around the top of the kitchen that will have glass doors and a lighting feature on the inside of each cabinet. And so we've made this light feature cabinet separate from each cabinet. So this is going to be installed like this. There'll be an upper here and an upper here and a little light feature with a glass door and a panel door here. We'll go to the paint shop and get it all done. This is how we build corner cabinets, and I hope you have learned a few things about the way we put them together, the things that are involved, how you calculate your measurements. This is a great little thing to learn as you ex expand your woodworking skills, and we'll see you next time on Woodworking with Wes.